We have one of my favorite types of cases today, a patient with an L5S1 ischemic spondy. It's technically challenging for a variety of reasons, but this is a stability problem and surgery is a stabilizing procedure. So I expect that he will get a great result. You can see that he's got a grade one, nearly grade two spondy. For his age, this gentleman has an unbelievably good looking back. All the other discs are really healthy. And I believe he's in his 60s. But this back pain has been just gradually getting worse. So we will do a minimal invasive T-lift procedure. So instead of one big incision down the middle, we'll make two paramedian incisions and try to preserve the musculature in the middle because those are very important muscles. And those muscles are very sensitive. You don't want to crush them. So we'll do two one-inch incisions. We'll have a little poke hole near his butt dimple for the computer navigation tracking pin. And we're all looking forward to him getting back to his busy life. And if all goes well, the surgery will probably take me about three hours and he should go home tomorrow morning. So we're all rooting for him. All right, we're about to get started. I drew all the perfect lines using computer navigation, which I just love because I'm a bit of a control freak. Starting. He's got some hard ass bone. It's like an invitation. It's just says, you know what? Come on in. Take a load off. Have a seat. Do you mind loading that one? Oh, yes. That feels so good. I'll take another one. Yep. I'll the X, the uh, screw look perfect. You can see the gas in the x-ray, which means it's moving and there's nothing in there. So it fills up with a vacuum. All caca poo poo, as they say. I have the high speed drill in here, removing the bone. So, here's one reason why a lot of people don't like doing mill invasive surgery. The surgical corridor is just totally narrow and directly in line with the surgical target site. And look at my neck. If I did the surgery open, I'd have it open like this, and then just look down, and my hands would look work like this. But MIS, it's everything about a narrow surgical corridor. So the angle of the surgical target set's like this. My neck has to go, look, look. I know work today, uphill, in waist deep snow, without shoes, both ways. So yeah. Alrighty, this is a very stiff motion segment. And I need to do good release, including fenestrating the posterior Fenestrating the ALL posteriorly. You can see the huge advantage of navigation now because it's like cheating. Of course, I know that the bifurcation has already occurred. I can also see it here. So this is my posterior ALL release. As part of my effort to mobilize this disk space and recreate the lordosis that he and all other humanoids deserve. If you don't have navigation, what you do is go into a pelvic inlet view by tilting the C-arm in the AP position into an extreme anti-Ferguson view. Wow, it is stiff up here. I don't know if you can hear this, but there's a sucking sound in here now that I released it. In addition to the straight rotating shaver, this one is angled, so if I need to get more toward me, I can use it this way, and if I need to get more contralateral, I can use it like that. It's blunt, so it's not gonna do anything crazy unless you, you go crazy on it. But this is how I do a posterior ALL release from the back. Alrighty, so this is another way you can cheat. I have this nice soft blunt dilator, you can tell. There's not a complete ALL resection, but it's released. I think that's gonna make a big difference, but we'll see. It's a very stiff motion segment. All right, we're doing the posterior ALL release. I fenestrated the 
ALL from the back very carefully. Now I have an expandable trial. Look at this thing. Oh yeah, this is going to look like an A-lift. I've already bottomed out on this trial. But there's always room for a couple of more turns. Save that. And now compare it to pre-op, which is basically bone on bone and almost grade two. Now it's a grade half. I haven't even done anything yet. I'm drooling with anticipation. Okay, come on out. Oh, yeah. All right, so I would say like this is the pinnacle of MIST lift. I have the MIST retractor. I have computer navigation. Um, I've done a posterior ALL release. And now I'm going to put in the world's sexiest cage, a true 15 hyperlordotic, massively expanding, beautiful cage. Look at that thing. And just wait until we expand it when we go in there. And there's a huge graph window that you can backfill once it's in. The only thing it doesn't do is talk. It does everything else. Woo, this is a tight fit. And that's why for MIS posterior, you almost have to have an expandable cage because this is going to accommodate a 14 millimeter cage. And I can barely even get the seven in there. See that? So a little test. And the other thing about this uh, cage is that the end plates are 3D printed. But the way they designed it is the edges are really smooth. So it just slides by. It goes in so easily for a 12 millimeter cage. It's shocking. All right, come on in for floral. All right, the money shot, the perfect lateral. Roll south. I'll get rid of all those wires in a second. Let's get it a perfect lateral. Can you lower the bed a little bit? Yep. And let's rotate the image too. Can you raise your machine up some more? Right there. Woo! I am just expanding this like there's no tomorrow. Oh my goodness. You just got to see how lordotic this is. And the spondy is almost a zero spondy now. We're at a 5 1. Like 4 5, there's no reason for me to use a hyper lordotic cage at 4 5 in this case if I had to do a 4 5 fusion. But for 5 1, you have to use this. And I'm telling you, it's going to be so much easier than Altera. People are going to be addicted to this. Don't tell the Altera people I said that. I love Altera. All right, so I've got the cage. I've got the cage in. I've got it crazy expanded. I already put a bunch of bone graft in. Now I'm going to put in more bone graft because that's how we roll. Are you sure I don't have to take this out? Nope. All righty, here it goes. Back filling the bone graft. Especially since I did a posterior ALL release, it's very possible some of the bone graft is going to squirt out the front. Now this will make sure that it goes in the cage, all around. And just, it's going to interdigitate. This is my favorite bone graft now. It's flowable. It has great handling properties. I've noticed very le uh, much less post-inflammatory response. That's anecdotal. It starts with an I and ends with a factor, but I can't tell you what it is. All right, so cute thing about this system is you can take the tulips off and put it back on. And that has a, a variety of advantages. For me, look how small this incision is. If I had the two tulips in there and then I need to put the retractor, that incision would be twice as long. Yeah. And I have some incision size issues.
Because size does matter with incisions. Here's the world's greatest lights. It's like a torch. Just the way I like it. And now I'm just sneaking the rod in because I'm a total sneak. And this is how the nut locks down the rod without having to look down there. These little extensions, and we'll break those off at the end of the case. Okay, don't tighten that yet, Jen. So this is how we do just a little bit of reduction. You do not want to force anything. But just like my mama said, greed be a powerful foe. This side. Like you long time. Lights off. Uh-huh. This part right here, oh, it does feel good. And putting the last minute touches to the wound. No way. This surgery could not have gone better, honestly. We're like, like dancing around, we're high on life. So, we're expecting you to be equally stoked on the results. And I can't remember what your hobbies are, but you should think about taking up kickboxing, skydiving, or um, bungee cord jumping because this is gonna be really stable. You're gonna feel so much taller. And I bet you the ladies are gonna think you're way sexier. I really do. So this is, you know what this is? So here is the new Sable inner body expandable hyperlordotic cage in the setting of a posterior ALL release. Oops, going in the wrong direction. Here's the Sable expandable hyperlordotic cage, also known as the sexiest cage alive. I've also done a posterior ALL release. And now I'm just expanding, getting bigger, more lordotic. Look at that. Compared to pre-op, it is unbelievable. I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I think you're gonna feel way taller and way sexier. So here's the posterior ALL release. Here's the posterior ALL release. I've now got the expandable trial in here. And check this out. Put the trial safely in place. I distract the disc space. Release the ALL because I fenestrated it. And look what the inner body space looks like just by itself now. It almost looks like a normal L5-S1 level. And compared to pre-op, it is amazingly better. So that is pre-op. It's hard to see, but it's almost bone on bone. Almost grade two, grade one, almost grade two.